We are uh, excited to be here. It's a, a great day to be a Bengal. I am pleased to introduce uh, Nate Houle as the next cross country coach at Idaho State University. Uh, Nate comes to us uh, after a few different stints, uh, most notably at Southern Utah University, uh, where he uh, helped create and increase the uh, experience and championship caliber of their track and cross country teams. Uh, got them to a point where they are nationally ranked uh, teams uh, and, and individuals going to the national championships. Uh, spent some time at Georgia State and uh, with all of that uh, experience, uh, we, we couple that with his experience as a, as a college student athlete uh, with his wife who uh, was a college student athlete. Uh, they both ran track and field. And, uh, the leadership and, and uh, personality that uh, the Nate has uh, has along with his wife is exactly what we're looking for for our track and field and cross country programs. Excited to uh, introduce Nate to uh, to all of you and welcome him to Idaho State University. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks. I can turn the time over to you. Um, all right. Well, just by way of introduction, um, like you said, my name is Nate Hool, and very very excited to be here. I think, and maybe this is redundant, but I genuinely believe that. Idaho State here, the program has fantastic potential and I cannot wait to get started. Uh, I think the sky is really the limit. Um, we're in a great conference, we've talked about that before, and teams in this conference nationally ranked and we are among that and I want to be a player in that game and I want to be one that beats them. And so I, I don't see any reason why we can't be at the national championship here at Idaho State and that's my goal, um, both men's and women. So that's kind of the direction that I would like to take the team. and I. Don't see why there would be much argument, and so that's where that's where we're going, and we're gonna hopefully do that sooner than later. So, um, I I'm I'm more a product of Utah, so we're not too far away from home. Competed here at Simplot Games as a high school athlete myself, so kind of has always felt like a second home to me in terms of track and field. So it's good to be here on a permanent basis and turn this into uh, what it really can be. So very excited. I don't know if we have questions or anything, I'm going to open up to that. Why is a job like this attractive? The, the biggest thing to me that I first caught my eye, I shouldn't say the biggest thing, the first thing that really caught my eye is the fact that there's an indoor facility here. Um, believe it or not, it's a rarity. Um, for a sport to not have a facility is actually a rarity, and it's a bit just the state of the sport. And so the fact that we have a great one here, we can host fantastic collegiate level stuff. We have great exposure to the high school athletes with you know, the nationally renowned <coughs> Simplot Games. I mean, it's just a recruiting engine. And there's just pieces in place at this university. It's a Division One school in the Big Sky Conference. It's one of the toughest conferences out there. And the talent pool in the Intermountain region is enormous. And it's just the pieces are in place. It kind of just takes somebody to put together and make it happen. And uh, like I said, I'm so excited to be that guy to come in and, give it my best shot to make that really put the glue, put all that together and see what comes of it. And I think really the future could be ex ex extremely exciting. And I just can't wait to see what happens. So. You said you're from Utah, you're a Utah guy. Uh, how familiar were you with Idaho State before taking this job? Yeah, quite familiar. Like he uh, mentioned, I was at Southern Utah right before this, and Southern Utah is a new member of the Big Sky. Direct competitors, uh, we actually, Made it. I ran for Southern Utah, coached for Southern Utah, and every year we made it our season opener was to come up to the Idaho State meet. And so, I mean, I've been on this cross country course multiple times as a coach and a student athlete. I've been on this track countless times. Some of my best races were on this track. And so, uh, it, it's a very familiar place to me, and I, I can't wait to make it home instead of just a place that we come to compete. And hopefully, you know, we can bring some good student athletes in that have that same same vision and same excitement about this place and so um, I don't know it's just it, it seems like a great situation overall. What's going to be your biggest selling point to recruits and why they should trust you a new coach to come here? Yeah um, I think one thing that maybe sets me apart is I put a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of schooling into uh, my education. I have a master's degree in exercise physiology and the interesting thing about track and field training distance runners is a lot of team sports it's a tactical game and it's really the X's and O's and how do you organize things 
and then you leave the strength and conditioning up to the strength and conditioning coach. Whereas track and field, that's the game, is know the human body, know how it works, and know how it adapts. And so my goal is hopefully convey that kids can come to me and trust the enormous amount of work they're going to have to put in and their pain and suffering, that it's all in a good direction. It's all for a reason, and it's all going to be productive. And so if I can convey that confidence in myself to them, and that they can be equally as confident in my abilities as a coach, I just think that settles the nerves a little bit. It, it gives them a, they can put their trust in somebody and then put their head down and work. And I think if, if they can buy into that image and that, that plan of action that I have, I think you know, somebody making a large life transition, that's a good thing to check off to not have to worry about is worrying, oh, is my coach doing what's right for me? And I think if I can prove that to them, uh, it becomes a lot more comfortable and easy to make that transition here. There's a lot of history at this school with track and cross country. The guy whose name's on the building, W. Holt, was one of the first cross country coaches and a tr very good track coach. Um, what kind of pressure is with this job with a school that's already seen success in this sport? Yeah, and one of the first things, actually, you bring that up, one of the first things I did, I went and looked at the school records. And I will say that it's somewhat intimidating because they are fantastic. They are really good. And for, for a mid-major Division One to have school records like that, I can't come in here and be like, oh, look, I just cleaned house on the school records. So that's not something that's going on my resume for a little while because they're really good. And so I want to be able to live up to that standard because if I can, <clears throat> we're at the NCAA championship again. And so it is actually somewhat comforting to me, though, because it's been done here before. It's been paved, and I just need to make it happen again. And so it is a little comforting on the same side that it's been done here. And like I said, the, the pieces are in place here. It just needs to be organized and put together. So it, it's exciting. It really is. And I love a place with history like that. And I think I want to hopefully put my stamp on it on this time that I'm here uh, to hopefully add another piece to that and build that up another level and see what, you know, what we can do from there. So. You're working on the track side of things with Dave, who's, uh, who's one of the better coaches in the nation even and sends people to the Olympics. Uh, how excited are you to, to work with a guy of that caliber? Yeah, Dave's, Dave's awesome. Um, the little bit I've met him in terms of like the interview process, we went out to breakfast, things like that. He has the personality type that I work well with. Just a really mellow guy that is you know, great at his craft, and I love that because we can work better. There's not budding egos. A lot of times you see coaches that have egos, and you know, I've got this agenda, and you don't fit into that. And it, track and cross country have to be somewhat married because they're under the same umbrella. And so having Dave being the guy that he is, but also the expert that he is, it just, I, I, I just can't imagine it going much better than that. So it'll be really well good to work with him and not like against him for resources. And so it's really a positive outlook, again, for the future. And he's just a good guy. And so I, I can't wait till he's doing better. I'm just, you know, going to be friends and stuff too. So it seems like a really good, uh, really good colleague to have. I'm excited. You have these goals, you want to make it to the national championship and whatever else. Um, how do you plan on doing that? I mean, what are the main uh, philosophies that you have as a coach? Um, as sad as it may seem to the outside world, recruiting is massive. It has to happen. Um, high school is fun because you have a geographic boundary and you have a generic talent pool. And if you're a good coach, you make that happen. With collegiate coaching, you have to bring that in yourself. And... A guy that doesn't know how to coach could have a better team than a guy who knows how to coach really well because he can't recruit. And so, number one has to be that. I have to have the bodies to work with, the minds to work with, that have championship caliber athletes. And what I think, again, I bring to the table is I can do that and I've proven that at Southern Utah. And then my game plan is with my education. I don't waste the talent once it's here and we make that the next step. And that's the combination we have to have to make it to that next level. Um, that's the plan. I know it sounds a little generic, but really the, the combination of those two things put together and then the rest is just, it's really listening to the athletes and finding out what makes each one of them the best they can be. And this whole idea where you put everybody in a grinder and see what comes out the other side, it just can't happen anymore. We don't, we don't want to operate with a team of 50 guys and then just put them through a, a mill and hopefully we have seven good ones at the end. I want every single one of them to count and I don't want to waste resources. So. I think when an athlete sees that you're invested in them as a person and they're not just a scholarship athlete, a generic person, then they actually perform even better. And so it's a huge combination of things.
balance, which obviously any sport is, but I think that's my strategy and that's my plan moving forward is to kind of put those all in line and make it all work with each other and not miss anything. So. Do you have a specific region that you're planning on um, targeting for recruiting? I know you're obviously very familiar with Utah and mm -hmm. kind of this area, but yeah, if you have a, a specific area, what would it be? Yeah, Utah is very tantalizing because if you look at the high school, Nike puts on a, a huge uh, national championship for high school. And if you look at the number of athletes per capita coming out of each state, Utah demolishes every other state. It's incredible the talent that comes out of there. The problem is there's a lot of big universities in Utah, and then there's a lot of other schools that see it and are picking Utah pretty clean. And they forget about Idaho, honestly. I have a national vision, but Idaho has a great talent pool, and there's no reason to neglect that. I want to bring in the local kids and build a local fan base and be like, have some pride in Idaho State. This is the Idaho school to go to. And then after that, work outward. International, that's fine. I have experience coming out of Canada. I have experience coming out of Europe. Um, I lived two years in Europe. I speak a different language. I think we can go anywhere. I have friends in places like Brazil. I have friends in places like Japan. No reason there's, there's limits that way, but I do want to start here because I, I, it's, it's more of a cheer for the home team type thing and build a culture here in the community and then work outward. And once the team gets good enough, people will come to us. And I've already seen that at Southern Utah where where I started and where I ended, the recruiting became, it was crazy. We'd turn the kids away instead of begging them to come. And so once that reputation starts rolling, things get crazy and it gets really, really fun. So kind of the, the game plan with recruiting is working and move out. Oh well, yeah, it makes sense. I mean, um, a lot of good runners in Idaho. Um, Elijah Armstrong, w one of the best around. Yep. Um, where in where in Europe did you say you lived? In Portugal. Portugal. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, and just for clarification purposes, went to Southern Utah. What did you run there? When? Did you, oh, what did I run? Yeah. I was a mid distance athlete. Okay. I ran cross country as well. Mm -hmm. um, definitely wasn't my focus. I was an 800, <clears throat> 1500 guy. Dabbled in the steeple, also the 400. Um, mm -hmm. Just kind of those middle distances. So, cool. kind of figure it's a good middle point. I understand the sprints, and I understand the distance. People say the 800 is the hardest event to coach, and I think I've got that down really well because that's what I focused yeah. on. And so, I think there's something to be said about that, and so I understand both sides of it, and I think it'll go a long ways in terms of my own coaching here. You got quite a family legacy in uh, track and cross country, from what I understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a lot of a lot of who I am, it was, it's a funny story. I actually wanted to go into engineering, and then I wanted to go into dentistry, and I had this thing where I'm like, I'm not doing coaching because my whole family does it. I'm like, I'm not going to be that guy that just, you know, just puts his head down and follows. But it, it ended up getting me, and I ended up doing it, and I ended up loving it. And so it's really what I love to do now, and maybe it's genetic, I don't know. But I've had some great predecessors, great examples. Um, like I said, I was just at Southern Utah. Eric Cool is the co head coach there. My uncle taught me a lot of great things. I have my head coach at Utah Valley, my uncle Scott, taught me a lot of great things. Um, I was coached in high school by my uncle Dave and primarily my dad Kirk. We learned a bunch of great things. We won national championships there. So the family legacy is there, but also the learning I gained from high, high caliber teams and the training and the way they approach things and the way they approach athletes as people and things like that, it rubs off and it becomes ingrained in you. And then my job is to just take that one step further and build upon what they've taught me and maybe, you know, build a little bit more, continue the legacy. So yeah, it's it's been nice for me because it's kind of been paved, like it, like you said, the history here at the school, it's somewhat been paved before me, so I'm not doing all the work myself, so it's good. Family pressure with that? Not too bad, actually. I feel like I'm the underdog here, so <laughs> I've got some catching up to do, and so it, they've they've done a lot, and so I'm just starting out. So I wouldn't say too much pressure, but I've got a long ways to go. So. If they beat you, are you going to hear about it? <laughs> Again, I'm the underdog here, so if I beat them, they're going to hear about it. So that's my goal. I like the the underdog position. So. It'll be fun. I'm excited. Like I said, Southern Utah would always come up for the first race. I hope to continue that. And um, it'll be fun kind of having the old, you know, uncles all together and be able to coach against them and stuff. So it'll be, it'll be a fun little family reunion once in a while. So. Jeff, what stuck out about him to you? Why is he sitting here over some other candidates? You know, Nate has uh, 
the, this confidence that exudes from him. Uh, knows exactly what he wants, knows how to get there. Um, you know, he's got a background in running and he's got a background in coaching, but his academic background also s stood out. Um, that exercise uh, physiology that he talked about in, in the interview process, he, he referred to that a lot. And uh, talking about running being more than stepping on a track or stepping on a course and just running as fast as you can, as long as you can. There's so much more than that. Uh, and, you know, from the first time that I spoke with him up until the time that he spoke with our, our search committee, um, he just kept popping up and popping up. He was impressive from the start and impressive at the end. And uh, with that in mind, uh, it, he was our top candidate. That's why we went this way. How important is it for you as a former track and field athlete to see uh, the, your sport thrive here? You know what? Uh, Started life as a runner, I'll finish life as a runner, and, and that's, that's a great thing. Uh, this is the best sport in the world. I'll say that. I'm, I'm a former track athlete, and you know what? Uh, but I'm a former track athlete. Couldn't do that anymore, but I, I love the sport, love to watch it, love to participate in it, participate in it and uh, I love the things that, uh, that Nate will bring to our program.